My name is Jenny Dawson. I'm from the UK, uh, living in London. And I run uh, a social enterprise called Rubies in the Rubble, which has been going for about two and a half years, so we're still in a growth period. Um, but Rubies in the Rubble is essentially a brand of delicious um, chutneys. Um, here's one of them. Um, made from what would be discarded, but perfectly good fruit and vegetables. Um, discarded because of shape or size, or just supply and demand imbalances. Um, as a way of providing employment and raising awareness about food waste. Um, we're still very small. Um, we have a small team that cooks everything. Um, so getting people back into employment is one part of it. Um, the main part of it, though, is this uh, um, way of just changing people's opinions and thoughts on, on, on food and how they treat food, um, valuing food again and, and seeing food as something that's natural, that comes out of the ground, that might be odd shaped, um, and not wasting it in a way. Um, I, I, the, the reason I started Rubies in the Rubble was um, the, this, this idea that there's one billion people going to bed hungry every night, yet we're wasting a third of the food that we produce. Um, and at the same time, our population's growing and growing, and the answer seems to be to plant more crops, um, which in turn uh, creates deforestation. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I looked at this problem, I was thinking, why is this not um, brought more awareness about this? Why are we not uh, dealing with the amount that we're wasting um, and storing things better, mm -hmm. rather than thinking, oh, let's grow more? I think for quite a while, um, I was feeling quite agitated or um, I, sp I was making good money. Um, I uh, had a lovely group of people that I was working with, but I was never passionate about what I was doing and almost living for my evenings or living for the weekends and dreaming about things. But spending my, my, my youth, I kept on thinking that I've got one shot at this and why am I doing something that I'm not passionate about? Um, and the, the feeling that uh, if my wage was cut in two, I'd, I would leave immediately. So I knew that I was only there for the, the money, really, and the security. And then um, this feeling of if I get to the age of 40 and I've done this all my life and had a very comfortable life, but never done anything that I was proud of, I'd be really upset with myself. Um, so I wanted to do something that I was really passionate about. Mm. And I think my generation as well, with the financial sort of um, insecurity and um, the shake-up, really, of the financial model, seeing uh, money devalue overnight made me um, sort of less concerned about saving money and, um, and making that my, my goal or my main focus because it, it had no real value um, and wanting to do something that I was really excited about and saw um, a difference that it was making. Oh yeah, there's huge challenges. I mean, we've fallen flat on our face so many times. We've made the wrong turnings um, and you can only plan for so many things. And almost, I think, if you plan too much and you don't take risk, you'll never do anything. So. Um, a, li a little bit of it is being naive and just jumping in and, and trying something. Um, and I really believe in trying something at a small scale first, seeing if it works. The main, the main check is actually seeing if there's a demand for it because the lovely thing and the exciting thing with a social business is that you, you've got your social game uh, and, and goals and, and the challenges in that. But as well, you've got to run a business. and. Um, if you're not selling anything or you, you're, you're, you're not making a service and no one's buying it, then you can't do your social side. So the, the two have to run together. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of challenges in that because you, you've got a, it's a very competitive world out there. Um, the market's incredibly competitive. Mm -hmm. People might buy your product once for liking the story, but they won't buy it again, um, especially in the food market. People think of their tummies first. Um, and you have to make sure that you're Com as competitive and as good as everything else mm -hmm. in your price range and on the shelf um, being really aware of your competitors. Mm -hmm. So there was many challenges that we faced. Um, getting the price right, making sure we had a product that everyone loved, mm -hmm. um, telling our story, reflecting the story in the way that we did our branding as well. All the same problems that any normal company would have. Um, 
But at the same time, I got such a buzz out of it because I knew that from making my product, I was doing something I was really passionate about and, and seeing change. Um, what I love most is, is, is actually probably the diversity of it. Um, I mean, I've learned so much thinking that I've only been doing it for two and a half years. In the time that I've done this, even if it failed tomorrow, I wouldn't feel like I'd wasted a second. I've learned how to start up a website, um, how to communicate with people, how to pitch something, um, how to sell a product, how to all the little basic things of doing a barcode or bringing something to a shop, um, and, and also communicating with people, making a business work, making a nice working environment, and skills that you would never gain if you carried on doing something without taking a risk and jumping in. Um, um, and the bits that I love is that every day is different. One day I'll be talking to a farmer about um, why his apples are so small this year, and the next day you're talking to a supermarket or talking to a web designer or um, trying to write something to do with your, your press. So it's, it's busy, um, and it's one thing that I've always loved. I like having lots of balls in the air, juggling different things, um, and constantly you, you're, you're constantly got your eye on different areas of it. Um, and I've been very fortunate that I brought on a business partner who's completely different to me. She's uh, very focused, does one thing at a time, and she completes it. So we work very well together. Uh, we've got an exciting year ahead, I, I think. Um, our next move, at the moment we're in the process of outsourcing um, quite a bit of our production. So sadly we're going to uh, lose our uh, employment side. Um, we used to work with disadvantaged uh, individuals, trying to get them back onto the work force. But um, for me, that personal side became harder and harder as we grew because I wasn't spending time with them in the kitchen and that's what I valued. Um, I really believe that a lot of people just need good people around them and, and support. And I felt like as we grew I wasn't doing that well. Um, so we're concentrating fully on the food waste side um, and we're looking to outsource our pro production but also going into different products. So we have a range of crisps coming out which um, I, everyone gets annoyed because I talk about them so much, I'm so excited mm -hmm. about them. Um, for the UK at the moment, the crisp market is, is a huge market, but it's all pretty much potato. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to do a range of really fun and exciting uh, healthy crisps, fruits, kale. Um, I actually went into one of your supermarkets yesterday and I'm, I came away with about 25 different <laughs> types of crisps and flavors. Um, we're so, behi so behind in that side. Um, so uh, to do something that's really healthy but incredibly tasty uh, will be perfect for us. And a crisp as well, we can use any shape of fruit and vegetable. Um, it's a great way of spreading our brand, um, mm -hmm. talking about food waste. And, um, and having something that's got a fast run rate. Chutneys mm. um, are very slow to move off a shelf. Mm. People don't buy them regularly. Um, so, yeah, it's an exciting year. The most important thing that I've found since growing, um, and we've, we've still got so, so um, far to go, uh, but this feeling of the way to make a social business succeed um, in the UK, and I think it's very similar in Thailand as well, and probably around the world, that a lot of the help focuses on the social side, um, uh, whereas you, you have to concentrate on the other side as well, the commercial side, that um, you've got to have a product that stands by itself on a shelf, that people will buy it despite your story, um, mm -hmm. that it's competitive, that it works, that it's what your customers want and look for. And I think that's, that part is really key um, because to, to carry on existing you need repeat buyers um, and you need people just to love your product for what it is. And then hearing the story behind your product, they'll be customers for life. Um, so that side of it, uh, and also just to remember to always step back and keep on thinking about what the end goal is, um, is, is incredibly important. But I, I think one thing that we did from the beginning was talking to as many people as possible, being really open, really chatty, hearing advice from different companies, different organizations, 
Um, and that helps incredibly as well, seeing what other people did, what you can learn from them. Um, and otherwise, just go for it. Um, take a leap. If you've got a good idea and you believe in it um, and you're really passionate about it, it's, it's going to be hard work to take it on, but um, it's worth it.